Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with the Money. I just made the three and a half hour drive to Lake Beardsley, and I'm here to fish the Stanislaus River below the dam. It's the traditional trout season down here, last weekend in April until November 15th is when it's open, but it's barbless artificial only. And there's a two trout limit, there's signs, and so it's clear what the regulations are. I've fished this for Patreon before, but not for YouTube. And when I fished it for Patreon, I was fishing uh, single barbless marabou jigs like I am now. And I got a nice brown. I lost a nicer brown one day, and then I came back the next morning because I was so bent out of shape over losing that fish that I came back the next morning and I got a nice brown in the net. But we're going to make some new footage today for YouTube. And I'm ready to go, you know, when you get, when you, after you finish a long drive like that, you get up at 3.30 in the morning, you're kind of worn down, but just getting here and looking at the river and getting ready to go is like a super shot of adrenaline and I'm ready to go down, I'm ready to do some fishing. Let's get some fishing going right now. So the other side has some really good fishable water, I'm probably going to hike down there. Because it's a lot easier than going farther downstream. If you go to my variety clip playlist, I the last time I was here, there was a massive jet of water flying out that looked like instant death. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't look like you're going to survive this either. <laughs> but at least here you have a chance. I can still feel the wind coming off of this. The other thing was like a jet stream. So I'm ready to go. Get my net in place. And I'm gonna fish a little bit of this and if it comes down to it, I'm gonna go to the other side. So if I can get this done here, I would prefer it. The last time I was here, this, wa this was underwater and I was fishing through these trees, it was a lot harder. So I'm hoping, because I can make better quality casts, it'll help. I keep getting snagged and I'm not making any adjustments. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I wanna get, this is deep here, I wanna get down into this deep water, because there's browns in here. I just had a decent brown follow my thing right up on here. I'm casting that slack water way over on the other side of the river. So if I catch something, we're just gonna have to see how it goes. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to land the fish, but gotta hook a fish to lose a fish. Just hit something on the downstream. Oh, he came off. He came off. Darn it. Had a lot of hits. He wasn't that big, but he was fighting. I think it might have been a rainbow. Just lost my third fish today. And it was a nice one on my fly rod. And he came up and nailed it. And now I think everything's afraid. <laughs> Got one of the bigger ones in the pool on my fly rod. And I was just sinking that deep fly down there. It's a rainbow. Let's see if I can get something in the net. Want to keep the pressure on these barbless flies pop right out man Ooh, there he is he's nice he's a nice rainbow let's get him out of that current get him out of those sticks get him out of those sticks Ooh, ooh. get him in got him that's a good rainbow on a fly rod there he is in the neck because i'm on this rock and i'm not going to be able to hold him very long i get my hands wet on the net then I can show them to you. And I ran my jig through here. These fish weren't gonna hit my jig. That was, that was clear. Dangry and wild, there he is. It's a nice rainbow right there. So uh, get him back in and maybe we'll get him next year when he's a couple inches bigger. Woo, there he goes. So as many of you know, I don't use a strike indicator. So my leader's pretty short. It's about seven feet. And I'm using the end of my line as my strike indicator. And I could, I could see those bigger fish were right down on the bottom and they were being really finicky. They weren't going after anything. So I put on this bigger copper john that's got a big bead head on it. 
and right behind that boulder, the current's kind of swirling. So all I did is I flicked it out there, gave it enough line, and then I'm holding my line right above the water, and then I'm letting the, the fly sink down into the hole. And I just saw my line go ding, ding, ding. It barely twitched. And he was on there. And I'm on the board after losing three fish already. One was like that. Two on my fly rod. I got one in the net. Thank goodness. I don't know if you can notice from here, the end of my, the top section of my pole is dark brown. It's because I busted the tip off this max catch. So I had to replace it with a six weight. So this, this rod's three, three quarters, five weight, one quarter, six weight. So I guess it's a 5.25 weight. I don't know. All I know is I'm done with this high tootin' falutin' fly fishing. I think it's time to get back to jigs, look for some big browns, but I'm gonna do a couple more drifts. I put on a heavier fly and I'm just trying to drift it through and I'm just watching my line. It'd be a lot easier to fish with a strike indicator. I don't like fishing with a strike indicator. It just makes it, I don't know. I like the challenge and the skill of being able to detect a strike with no indicator. Just watching my line and dealing with the current. So I'm on the other side now, and to be perfectly honest with you, this is where I should have started. There's a cliff right here, I gotta get down there. There's a road. As long as I'm not trespassing, I'm good. Fishing below the dam on the other side, I immediately started getting into some fish. He's into some bushes though. Get out of those bushes, dude! Darn it! He got me. I can't go get him over that. I still got him? He's flashing, I gotta get him over these rocks, man. Ah! It's a nice brown, I can see him flashing. He is caught. He's got me. Get out of there! All right, I gotta let him go a little bit. All right, I let him go. Was that enough? I can see him, he's pinched. All right, I'm gonna let him go. Let him go. Oh, there he is, he's all hung up. Oh, there he is! Darn it, I can't get this guy! All right, I'm gonna do something risky here. I'm gonna go, I put my pole down. I think there's grass over here. I think I can just reach down and grab him. Where is he? There he is. Got him! I got him! I got him on the back side. There he is, nice brown trout right there. And I'll show you what happened. My line's in the water. That was ridiculous. So I'm fishing over there on the other side. I hooked him, he ran with the current swirling back. And he got hung up on behind this rock and that stick. But I could see him tangled up on it. So I just ran over here with my net and I got him in the net. Once you get away from the dam on this side and you want to go to where I want to go, and I've done this before when I was fishing it for Patreon, you got to battle through some crap, man. I'm going through some heavy force. Off the main stream, I wanted to go right over there, but man, I cast it out and it had a nice rainbow. And I thought he had it. I thought, I thought he had it, but he didn't have it. I thought he had it though. Let's see if he'll go again. He followed it twice in. But the second time, he really tried to get it. He didn't follow it that time. <laughs> he said, dude, I followed it twice. How many times do you want me to follow it? Oh, man. There's a fish sitting right there. This is a trout situation. You see what this guy's doing? Is he... Is he taunting me? 
Or is he sick? Yeah, I don't know what his, I don't know what his problem is. That jumping rainbow. He was jumping, boy. Woo, right when I set the hook, he jumped. And I picked him up, I was scooting my jig right along the bottom. See, I keep him in the net, and he's nice and powered up. You know, this water is pretty cold. And you can, the fish can really revive in these rubber nets, as I allude to often. Let's go hold this guy up, he's wild. He ain't gonna, he, he ain't gonna rest for long. You just behave for a second here. All right, this is gonna end real quick. There he is. Beautiful fish, little glimmer of light. He's ready to go back. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Had to change my jig because that other jig was falling apart, man, after those two fish. They chewed it up. And I use cheap jigs, but I reinforce them with black yarn. So what I did for that fish is, I usually don't do good. I, the current's way out there and it's coming up against the bank over there. That's my ultimate goal. But this looked good because it had shade. So what I did is I whipped it out as far as I could towards the current. I let my jig sink and then I just doing little tiny jigs in. And I'm trying to scoot it as deep along the cover as possible without getting snagged. And that guy nailed it. Still working my way over to where this current hits the bank around the corner. But after getting that fish, I'm gonna fish some of this deep water. Water's really clear, I can see my jig from a mile away. And the current's swirling back around right here, so I'm gonna run it deep back in with this current, even though there's not a lot of it. Maybe there's a brown or a rainbow sitting in there. But I've seen some nice fish just in the river chilling. They just wouldn't bite. The ones that did kept falling off. Ooh, one was following it and he's nice. <laughs> I saw him. He was following it. He wasn't that big. Let's let's get a hold of ourselves. Now I can see him. He's just chilling out there now. So here's the spot I wanted to originally fish. The current bypasses all that slow stuff and hits the bank over here. So that's what I'm so I can throw it upstream. And I can go really deep and slow. And I'm hoping I can pick up something big. Still haven't hit something big yet. But I'm way up on this rock. <laughs> and these jigs never work in slow water until now. And now they're working good. And this is, will keep me fishing them in slow water forever. So he's not the fish of the day or anything. But I'm getting a lot of hits on my jig in this slow water. These fish are being really aggressive. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm throwing it out, letting it sink to this in this deep water. And I'm just shooting it across the bottom and I'm and I'm hitting fish, man. So I'm back in a cove, the current's out there, and then it hits the bank over there. So that's where I'm headed. But since I've been hitting fish in this slow water, I'm good, definitely gonna be making some casts still. But I'm all the way over here. The dam is way over there. I've been battling through rocks. And I still haven't got that big fish I'm looking for, but I'm still fishing. Whoa, there's a bunch of fish like right down below me hanging out in this deep water right here. And this brown just took a shot, man. He came out of this cave. Okay, I'm gonna have to jig inside of these little cave areas because that fish came out of out from under the rock. He's just sitting under there. And he came swimming right out and nailed my jig. What the heck is going on? I'm just vertically dancing this thing right now. See if he comes back out. Oh, oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, oh. He is all over the sink. It's a rainbow. All right. My pack is off and I'm ready. 
I'm vertical jigging. Because there seems to be a lot of fish hanging out in this rocky shore, man. And there's one, he, he came out, but now he's not hitting it anymore. Where is he? He's swimming in circles around it like a shark. Come on, dude. This is a marabou meal. <laughs> Stop being so picky, you sucker. One thing that is clear, there's fish just sitting in these rocks. I'm having one after another just like come out when my jig swims by and take a shot at it and go back under the rock. All right. We're getting some good fish out here, man. Ooh, he came off. He came off. Darn it, that fish hit twice. I love casting over these high rocks. I just had another one and I watched him. It was a nice brown like 13, 14 inches. He came up right behind my jig and hit it. I set the hook and he came right off. But I like them coming high like this because you can see the fish. And I just like to see how the fish strike, you know, and maybe that'll help me down the line figure out why I'm missing fish and stuff. So I always try to do some high casting. Then if I get something, I'll figure out how to get down there. But I mean, that fish just came up out of the rocks. They're hanging out in these rocks on the side. All right, I got about a mile to battle through this stuff. I think I'm gonna take another shot at that fast water under the dam. I think there could be another big boy under there. I'm looking for a trophy today, and it's just I haven't gotten it yet. I've gotten some nice fish, lost a lot of nice fish, but I haven't gotten anything exceptional. Talk about fish everywhere. I'm in this back area flooded by trees. I threw my jig out there, got a big hit at way out there, and then this little brown swam up and cranked it. Let me get my hand wet on the net. He's a one-hander. But I mean, there's fish everywhere, and they're all just really aggressive today. I just had another brown come out of that tree. That tree seems to be a hot one. This one's better than the last one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I gotta even up. I was heavy rainbows. But this is a beautiful brown. Right there. Jigs don't work in still water, huh? <laughs> they sure work in today. <laughs> Pass in a row in this same little lagoon. Oh, he got off. That one got off. I mean, what's going on? That thing was hidden. He was wrapped up in the, the bushes. That's gonna wrap it up. That was some explosive marabou jig fishing action. And I usually don't get action in the slow water. They were all over this thing today. And I got a lot of fish in the net. And I, I lost a lot of fish. And I saw fish following, I'd say 60 to 70% of my cast, I had something following it in. Swiping at it or just following it. And the fishing was just really good. And I'm gonna try to get back here before they close the road, close the pass. Because the fishing is open until November 15th. I hate fishing in this sun. I hate having to put sunscreen and bug spray all over more skin. I like to just have everything covered but my face. But whatever, it was really good fishing in the status loss below the dam in the special regulation section. I hope you enjoyed those rainbows and browns. I was looking for something really big. I didn't get anything big. I didn't even see anything that big. I saw a lot of nice fish in the 14 to 16 inch range following my jig, hitting my jig, being lost. The nicest fish I got was when I ran up to my car and got my fly rod really quick because I saw a situation where I could use my fly rod to capitalize. That's all that was. I was capitalizing on a specific situation and it worked out. I got that really nice rainbow, so that was great, man. This was a very fun day. I'm tired.
My alarm went off at 3.30 this morning, and then I drove three and a half hours here. I'm beat. Fishing down here this evening is probably going to be phenomenal, but I got to climb out of here, man. I don't, I don't think I have an evening session down here in me, so... Thank you for joining me on Wilderness with Imani down here in the special regulation stretch of the Stanislaus below Beardsley Dam. Until next time.